a lot of musical theater history, because it is such a limited art form, kind of runs in a linear A to B to C to D kind of line. And every once in a while, I discover a little factoid that completely blows up some stuff I thought about certain musicals. Uh, anyway, play the jingle. Hey, it's the show of the week. Welcome back to Show of the Week, the weekly segment where we talk musical theater and where I wear flannel. Recently, for many reasons, none the least of which is the fact that I turned 35, I've been on a kick about company. A company kick, if you will. Um, and I don't know if that's the best thing for someone turning 35 to spend a lot of time watching this show, but the more I listen to it and the more I watch it and the more I know about it, the deeper connection I have with it. And I think I talked about this show before, but that was a much younger me and I'm a much older me now. But I want to talk about something in particular, a very specific thing that I noticed when I was watching the company documentary. You might, you have probably seen clips of this documentary and not noticed it, or maybe you do know it. Uh, this guy named D.A. Pennebaker, who was a documentary guy, uh, was on spec kind of commissioned to put together a short documentary piece about the creating of the cast album for Company in 1970. If you watch the documentary, you'll see ostensibly this was going to be a larger uh, production, a larger uh, television show, but they only ever came out with this one. But it is wonderful and gorgeous. And I used to only be able to watch it by uh, putting in an interlibrary loan to the local library and waiting for some DVD to be delivered from Duluth or whatever. Uh, but now it's on Max, and so you can just watch it now. And it's upscaled, and the audio is great. Highly recommend it. And once you're done watching that, you can watch the documentary now parody of it, which is a blessing and very, very funny and very, very niche. But anyway, this time through, while watching it, I was struck by something that George Firth said. George Firth is the book writer of Company. If you haven't listened to Company, it is a contemplation of marriage. It follows Bobby and his soon-to-be-married, soon-to-be-divorced, currently married friends, and also his kind of internal mental struggle about what marriage and relationships and love mean. And I use male pronouns, but even the most recent revival is a gender-swapped version, which is really cool and maybe the definitive version but that's not what this video is about. This video is about George Firth, kind of. George Firth is featured just a little bit in this documentary because it's about the album, and that's probably the thing that Firth was the least involved with, right? Because he didn't write the music or the lyrics, he just wrote the book. But there's this one little to-camera clip. I'll play it for you right here. There came a point where I didn't... I didn't write it anymore. They were the characters. And whenever anything was wrong, I knew I wrote it. But when everything sounded right, they were making it up. And I've done a lot of research around company, but I've never seen so exacting a description of this being a cast devised piece. At least based on what he's saying in that clip, it does make it seem like that a lot of the words you hear on stage aren't necessarily George Firth's original thoughts. You still need a book writer to coalesce those thoughts and say yes and say no to things. But the fact that he credits a lot of the good dialogue, so it seems, in this show to the company, different kind of company, um, well, that is very interesting. And it is specifically interesting to me because of Michael Bennett's involvement in Company. So stick with me on this. Michael Bennett did the musical staging for Company in 1970. Um, and so he is well aware of this process. He is watching this kind of actor devised piece and seeing, you know, this piece that in many ways is a slice of life of some of the performers on stage, at least an elevated version. But there's plenty of other citations too that say like Elaine Stritch's character is based on her and uh, like Dean Jones was going through a divorce during all of this. Uh, he played the original Bobby. So like there's some credence to some of that. Fast forward about five years, and we are now in off-Broadway workshops for A Chorus Line. A Chorus Line, perhaps one of the most famously actor-devised pieces. Um, and Michael Bennett's involvement in A Chorus Line is... Uh, certainly contentious and the subject of several lawsuits as well about the origin of the story and how this came to be and uh, 
I don't have the brain power to get into it all right now. Um, but there is at least a nugget of truth in the fact that Michael Bennett's ideas around creating this actor devised piece is something that made a chorus line what it is in 1975, five years after company. And so here's where my conjecture begins. And people don't write this stuff down. You can never find, you know, really good primary sources on this sort of stuff because arts people aren't the strongest archivists of their own work. That's not what they're focused on. They're focused on making the art, not writing down the history that's happening around them while the art is being made. Still, it makes you wonder how much of Michael Bennett's idea to create this actor devised piece, a chorus line about the lives of these performers, about these dancers, how much of that was birthed in the audience, in the rehearsals, in the tech rehearsals for company. I mean, you can kind of picture him like in the back of the theater, you know, as people are uh, improvising lines on stage and also as he's probably hanging out with all these 30 something people in New York. The light bulb goes off or at least it goes in the back of his idea book. And then a couple years later, he is part of these workshops and sees the nugget of this idea. And thus we've now drawn a line from company to a chorus line, maybe. Anyway, that's been on my mind this week. Thank you, as always, to all of my Patreons. Uh, thank you for your support. Uh, thank you for guiding me into my 35th year on this planet. I guess I got 11 more times to do it. Um, if you want to become a Patreon, check out the, you know how this works. Um, I think I've covered both company and a chorus line already, but I keep learning new things about these shows. Um, and you know, it's such a delight as they age like a fine wine, perhaps better than I do. I age like uh, Trader Joe's wine, which is also pretty good. Anyway, listen to a chorus line or company, either one. I'll see you next week. Bye.